once I found my vertical asymptotes first, when going for my graph, I'm going to go over to positive 2 and to negative 2, and I'm going to create dashed lines. Now remember your asymptotes. Vertical asymptote, your graph is never going to intersect. But import, the important thing about an asymptote is that is going to be the line that your graph is going to approach. So we know our graph is going to approach these lines. Okay. So when you're thinking about that, even if you don't know what the graph looks like, you know that the graph is going to approach them. Um, next thing, find our horizontal asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes, basically we're looking at the degrees of each of them. So degree in our numerator over the degree in our denominator. And what I state is when the degree in the numerator is equal to the degree in the denominator, y equals a over b, where a and b are the leading coefficients. So my degrees are exactly the same, right? So the leading coefficient of my numerator is negative 3. The leading coefficient of my denominator is 1. So my horizontal asymptotes, I could say d is equal to n. The degree in my denominator, in my numerator, is equal to my denominator. Therefore, y equals negative 3 over 1, which is just the same thing as y equals negative 3. Does everybody follow me? Anybody have any questions or whatever else? Um, then the next thing is I don't need to do 2a because that's for slant asymptotes. Um, for number three, I need to check for symmetry. Check for symmetry. If you guys remember, what, when, it hap when you plug in f of, sorry, I wrote that in wrong. When you plug in f of negative x, when you plug in f of negative x and you get back f of x, that tells you what type of function you have. E, e, even. If you plug in f of negative x and you get back negative f of x, that tells you you have odd. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug in f of negative x. OK. What I get out is 3 minus, oh, I'm sorry, 3x squared minus x plus 12 over x squared minus 4. Is that the exact same as my original? No. Is it the exact opposite, mean everyone has the opposite sign? No. no. So guess what? There's no symmetry. No symmetry at all. Why is symmetry nice? Because symmetry is nice because if I know there's symmetry across the y-axis, I can just choose points to the right and then just reflect it over. Does that make sense? So having symmetry is nice. All right. Um, and you guys should be fairly quick with how to be able to check symmetry. Next thing, so we don't have any symmetry. So guess what? Now what we're going to have to do is just choose points. All right. And this, again, is where kind of like your calculator comes in handy. Basically, ladies and gentlemen, we know that the points that make up our, um, <clears throat> basically what we're going to do is plug in points for x and they'll find their values. So I always like to do two points to the left and to the right of each asymptote. So in this case, I would do negative 1, 2, 3, 4. So I would evaluate for f of negative 4, f of negative 3. I'll do f of negative 1. The middle is always kind of difficult, so I'll do f of 0, f of 1, f of 3, and f of 4. Okay, You're still going to want to show me what these points are, even if you have a calculator. I'm going to still need to see at least what exactly is one point to the right or to the left. Yes? Wait, uh, you said that it was good. It was like helpful sometimes if there's no symmetry. No, if there is symmetry. Because oh. look, if there's only symmetry, all I'd need to do is find points to the left, and then I could just reflect it over. right? But there's no symmetry, so I don't know what this graph looks like. So if you don't have a calculator, do two points to the right and two points to the left of every asymptote. If you have a calculator, you can use your calculator to aid you, but you're still going to need to show me at least a point to the left and to the right. So, so basically, you're just going to do negative 3 times negative 4 squared plus negative 4 plus 12 divided by negative 4 squared minus 4. So that becomes um, 16. That becomes negative 48. Let's see, that's going to be negative 48, negative 52, negative 40. 
divided by 16 minus 4 is going to be 16 minus 4 is going to be 12. So therefore, that approximates to, just give me the decimal. Anybody have the decimal form of that? Assuming my math is correct. Anybody? OK. I will follow. I will pick up the slack. Sorry, what is it? Oh, shoot. I forgot to write in the asymptote. We also have this horizontal asymptote, right? So we got to plot that. My apologies. So I do negative 40 divided by 12 to speed this along is negative 3.33. So at negative 4, I'm at negative 3.33. OK, let's do negative 3. If I plug in negative 3, that's going to be 9. So that's going to be uh, negative 27, negative 30, um, negative 30. So that's going to be negative 18 over 9 over 5. Does everybody follow me? I'm doing my math in my head. Negative 18 divided by 5 is a negative 3.6. OK? So let's look at this again. If you guys can see, this graph has to go through these two points, right? Has to go through these two points, um, which is a negative 3.66. And has to go through these two points, and it also has to approach this asymptote and that asymptote. The only way for us to do that is to kind of have a curve like that. Does everybody agree with me? Yes? No? Maybe so? All right, let's do negative 1. If I plug in negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Plus uh, negative 1 is going to be negative 3 negative 4, negative 4, so that's going to be 8 over negative 3. So at negative 1, I'm at negative 2.66. So at negative 1, I'm at negative 2.66. Let's check in what 0 is. 0, 0, that's going to be 12 over negative 4. So at 0, I'm here. I'm actually on the asymptote, which is OK for a horizontal asymptote. Um, let's check at number 1. If we plug in 1, so you plug in 1, you'll have negative 3, negative 2. So negative 2, that's going to be 10 over. 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 3 is negative 3. So 10 divided by negative 3 is negative 3.33. So at 1, I'm at negative 3.33. All right. So how do I graph something that goes through these three points, okay, but converges to this asymptote and converges to that asymptote? Well, when you guys get enough practice with this, you see it's going to look something like that. OK? And then if I just go ahead and apply um, 3 and 4, since I have this graph in my graphing calculator, I'm just going to go to my table function to save me time. And on my table function for 3, it's negative 2.4. And for 4, it's negative 2.67. So now you just connect these points. OK? Yes, at least questions? No? OK. Anybody have any questions on that? No? 